All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what is going on, everyone? This is your boy here, the Yankee Hardcore Pipe Bomb Messiah here with you. Uh, your personification of excellence when it comes to sports talk here. Uh, this is going to be the last video of the day here. And um, we are just uh, less than 24 hours away. Um, European football, the start of the summer of soccer as I like to call it, because we do have not one, not two, but three major tournaments that I'm going to be watching uh, throughout the summer. Of course, the first one here that we're going to be talking about is the 2024 UEFA European Football Championships. Uh, they start tomorrow, like I said. Uh, the first match that is going to be on is going to be the Host Nation Germany as they go up against Scotland. Um, so, it's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to be seeing throughout the whole month. Maybe some Shakespearean drama. And we're going to get into my predictions on who I think is going to come out from each group. Of course, um, 24 teams um, is in this. Uh, 24 countries, whatever you want to say. But there's only going to be one. That's going to be the survivor when it's all said and done. So we're going to start it off here with Group A. Of course, as I've mentioned, it's going to be Germany, Switzerland, as I like to call them, the Swiss Supermans, Hungary, and Scotland. Um, I could say um, Scotland and Hungary is going to be... Um, They'll be teams to watch. I think they're going to be one of the countries to watch. But um, you already know who the two front runners are going to be in this group. Now, remember, the only way to get into the round of 16 is, yes, you have to be in the top two if you, in the group. But remember, there's going to be slots in there. There's going to be, I believe it's like four slots. And... It's really the top four nations from this tournament. So, technically, um, if you do draw in the first or second game, you're pretty much still in the tournament, no, no matter what. But, um, of course, you know, Germany, uh, they're going to be heading into these European championships. Um, they're going to do something that... You know, they tried to do in 2006, because remember, in 2006, they actually hosted the FIFA World Cup, and they were eliminated in the semifinals. Um, of course, the finals is going to be July 14th. Um, of course, you know, you got Julian uh, Nagelsmann in there. And um, I got to say, with Germany, uh, even though... They didn't do well in the last FIFA World Cup. Um, you still have to consider them as a favorite in this tournament. Um, as far as Switzerland goes, um, they've always had a solid outing um, in the international competitions. I know um, in the FIFA World Cup, I believe they were in the round of 16 um, in the FIFA World Cup before eventually losing to Portugal. Um, and, you know, they, uh, they're they going to continue on the streak. And I know that um, they actually had a really good European run um, in the last tournament. I believe they actually eliminated France in the tournament. So I'm going to go... Um, I'm going to say uh, Germany and Switzerland are going to uh, come out of this group. And that's where I'm going to go with my Group A predictions. Now, Group B. Okay. Uh, this is a really tough group here. Um, I do think one of the wild cards uh, is going to be um, awarded in this group. And it all starts with uh, Spain. Italy. The reigning and defending European champions, Croatia and Albania. Um, so Italy, we all know the story. They were not part of the last World Cup. 
Actually, we all know what happened. They got eliminated in the semifinals. Um, in the uh, in the uh, playoff for the World Cup qualifying, and um, that really gave the way for Portugal to come in because everybody was expecting Italy and Portugal to play for that uh, one of the spots. Um, and then, of course, you know, in um, 2018, they did miss the World Cup in Russia. But, of course, you know, this is going to be... <sighs> A lot of people are calling this the group of death. And quite rightfully so, because you look at this, Spain. We know Spain has won the European Championships in 2008 and 2012. Not to mention, they did win the World Cup in 2010. They're still one of the top countries in the world of soccer. But, um, and you got to think of Croatia as well. Because Croatia, remember, they have reached the Final Four in the last two uh, World Cups. So, and I did watch them play Portugal last weekend uh, in a friendly, and they beat Portugal 2-1. to one. So, having to do my homework on this, um, I'm going to say it. And I know I'm going to shock a lot of people. I'm going to say Spain is going to take the group. Croatia. And the reason why I'm going to go with Croatia here is because Italy has not looked as strong in recent years. Um, but I, I will say this. They will get one of the wild card spots. I truly feel that you're going to see one of those spots come in. So I'm going to go with um, that as my prediction. Um, let's get to uh, Group C. England, sweet Caroline, oh, 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 I know you England fans love that, Denmark, Serbia, and Slovenia, alrighty, um, here's the thing about England, England comes in there, every time they're in an international or international type of tournament, England is, they have a lot of pressure. I truly feel like this is a team that's going to be in the knockout stages. I mean, you got Drew Bellingham in there. I mean, Drew Bellingham, who plays for Real Madrid. He just won a UEFA Champions League a couple of weeks ago. Um, you got Harry Kane in there. Um, of course, you know, they were the runners-up. In the European Championships four years ago, losing to Italy. Um, Denmark, uh, let me just say this about Denmark. Uh, we all know about the story, what happened four years ago. Um, if you do remember what happened, um, I, one of the players um, had a cardiac arrest during the game. And it was really one of the, um, it was Christian Eriksen, yes. Um, I had him in my mind, the player. Um, he had that hot, that massive cardiac arrest and, you know, lived. And we all talked about it. We all talked about the fact that, you know, thank God you had the doctors um, on the pitch because we did not want to hear about a tragedy happening in the European Championships uh, three years ago. And they were a Cinderella team during that. Um, the thing that I like about Denmark, uh, they do have a heavy roster with a lot of veterans. Um, they do have some young and exciting players that we're going to be seeing in this tournament. Um I'm going to say they're going to be one of the top... They're going to be in the top two of the group. I mean, some people are even saying that they could win Group C. I, I don't... I don't uh, agree with that. You know, I have to disagree a little bit on that. But you never know. 
you know, soccer is one of those uh, unpredictable um, things that we have to see. Serbia, oh, I know a lot about Serbia. Um, this was the team that beat Portugal. And one of the reasons why Portugal, um, in the last World Cup cycle, had to go into that playoff. Um, so they might be a little bit of a tricky team to watch. I mean, they could get one of the wild cards in there. Uh, Slovenia, I think they're going to be in the bottom of the barrel. So that's my uh, Group C prediction right there. Let's go into Group D. It all starts with France. Yes, France. The Netherlands. Poland. Austria. Oh boy, this is another fun and exciting group because this is a group that got rivalries in here. Um, everybody loves an underdog story. You know me. I love the true underdog story. I love, you know, kind of like, you know, what Daniel Bryan did in WWE in 2014 uh, when he, uh, the Miracle on Bourbon Street, the true underdog story of that. But Poland and Austria, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you guys are taking a back seat on this one. But the thing with, I mean, you're going to get some good games here between Poland and Austria. You know, that's a little bit of a European rivalry. Um, France and the Netherlands. That's also a European rivalry as well. You know, those two teams, um, it's more like a next-door neighbor rivalry. And um, when you go in and you look at the Dutch, uh, they go into this tournament, they're looking good. They've won five out of their last six matches. Um, of course, you know, France... They're going to be one of the favorites. And of course, you know, France has got to be thinking one thing. They want to win it. They want to win this. Because we all remember two years ago. That heartbreaking loss. That five-star classic against Argentina. The greatest FIFA uh, World Cup soccer game that we've ever seen. Um, five stars and beyond. Chock full of Shakespearean drama. Uh, what a great way for the uh, the 32 team error to end uh, and going into this new era of soccer. So um, France is going to be my favorites. Um, of course, you know you got a lot of talent here um, with Kylian Mbappe for France. Of course, he's going to be the big story after signing with Real Madrid. Uh, you got Robert Lebakowski for Poland. That guy is still a threat. He's 35 years old. Um, but remember, Poland, they got into this tournament by a playoff. Think about it. And that's why I don't see them. Um, I don't know if they're going to make it into the wild card. I don't think they're going to be one of the wild card teams here at the end of the day. But... Um, you can't take down France in the Netherlands. So I'm just going to go in and we're going to get into Group B. Belgium. Ukraine. Slovakia. And Romania. You know what? I might actually put um, Poland in there as a wild card team. I might. All right. Everybody talks about Belgium. Because their golden generation um, is really almost edged out. But here's the thing about the Belgians. They still have some players. And they still have some quality to make a deep run in this tournament. Ukraine, I know a lot of people talk about it because um Ukraine and they look dangerous. Um obviously you want to root for Ukraine. Um 
because of everything that's going on in that country right now with the war. Um, they did finish third in their Euro qualification group. They got in through the playoff. Um, they're going to have um, a lot of their supporters there in Germany. And this is actually going to be a great time, you know, because I truly feel that with soccer, it's going to heal that nation, yes, that nation, they're still fighting, people are still dying there, but at least it takes a few weeks off of that negative energy, and you get to root for your country, um, so, I like to see Ukraine, I mean, there are people out there saying that Slovakia could actually get out of this group, it, it wouldn't shock me, to say the very least, but, um, I'm going to go with them. Uh, let me see. Do I have... Um, you know what? I might actually put them as my final wild card. Um, I'll put... Whoever it finishes third in this group is going to get the final wild card spot. So, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with the Belgians. And I'm going to go with Ukraine here. And then I'll put Slovakia... In there as a wild card team. And last but not least. Group F. Led. Uh, it is Turkey. I got to start it off here. It, on my notes. Uh, I was going to say. Be a little bit biased. Portugal. Georgia. And Chesina. Or that's what they call it. Or now they call it the Czech Republic. It's the Czech Republic. But it's now called Chechnya. Alright, so when it comes to Portugal, obviously, you know, and a lot of people will, and I'm actually going to focus more on this because um, Portugal, this is a team that um, I do root for. It is my heritage. Um, of course, you know, the big story, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, he's going to be in this tournament. Um, this will probably be his last major tournament uh, with Portugal. Um I might say um, this edition of the Euros is going to be the last. I still believe that he will play um, World Cup football. He's going to try to get Portugal to go into the World Cup uh, in two years from now. Um, of course, we all know his resume. Uh, Five-time Bella Dior winner. Um, the thing about Cristiano Ronaldo, he's not a consistent starter. Um, and we saw in the World Cup two years ago, um, there was games where he was on the bench. But this Portuguese team, they have the talent that will get them out of the group stage. Um, they had an underwhelming performance um, in the last European. Of course, you know, they were in, keep in mind, they were in that group of death. Remember that. Uh, they were in there with Germany. They were in there with France. Um, they were in there with Hungary. They actually did... that. The only game that they beat was Hungary. But they did lose to Germany. And then they drew with France. And then they got eliminated by Belgium in the round of 16. Um, and believe it or not, the, the head coach uh, for Portugal was actually the coach for that Belgian national team, Roberto Martinez. Um... The thing about Turkey, and let me um, let me talk about Turkey here. Um, they're gonna have the edge. They're gonna be. Um, I think they're gonna finish second in this group. Of course, you know, Portugal and Turkey did play. Um, they did play in. I, it was in one of the um, the FIFA World Cup um, playoff spots in the semifinals, and Portugal actually did beat Turkey, but. What I saw in that game that day, Turkey was actually that tough on Portugal. So watch out for this Turkish national team. Um, their weapon is going to be the set pieces. Um, that is their huge strategy right there. Uh, and they do have this uh, player, uh, Ada uh, Gular, if I pronounced the name correctly. Um, 
that's a player that you're going to watch. I, I mean, he might be a superstar in the making. Uh, Georgia, I don't think they're going to go that far. Um, at least they have the opportunity of playing in an international stage, a major tournament. Um, and then Czech Signal, Czech Republic, as I like to call them, uh, they're going to miss out on it. But the one thing that I have to um, say it like this with Portugal before I end before I end things here. Um, the thing about Portugal is, you know, of course, you know, I get excited with this team wins. But there's also disaster with this team. And... So that's kind of a warning that I want to say to the Osalasson um, supporters. But yeah, uh, I'm going to go with Portugal and I'm going to go with Turkey here uh, to finish this group. I don't think both of these teams in um, Georgia and Chexna are going to get the, the wild card spot. I just don't see that. Um, if I'm going to be honest with you. But um, that's it for the Euro 2024s. Um, of course, um, sometime within next week, I'm going to have a preview of the 2024 Copa America, which is going to be here in the United States. Um, I'm looking forward to um, watching that as well. Of course, uh, they have been having some of the... Uh, Friendlies for that, you know, Team USA, of course, last night, drew with Brazil 1-1 one one after that disaster that they had against Colombia. So, uh, we will get into that um, in the coming days. And then, as we get into the month, um, we're definitely going to get into the Olympics. Um, I'm going to be checking that one out, even though that is an under-23 Tournament, but still, there's a lot of great prospects um, that do play in that tournament as well. So, uh, I might do women's as well. Um, even though I do not follow the women's game, if I'm going to be honest with you, I might do a prediction on that as well. So, um, let me all know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, until then, I am out, guys. Peace and enjoy Euro 2024.